Hello there guys and welcome to my thoughts and think piece on Zack Snyder's Justice League. And let me just sum it up. Is it a good film? No. Is it entertaining? Surprisingly, yes. It actually is. And I am full because I just had to eat my words and my hat because I thought this film was going to be uh, an amusing disaster. And actually, I was thoroughly entertained for four hours. Crazy, I know, but I, I, I'll admit it. But it's an interesting anomaly because the question, the real question is, would this film have been as entertaining if it didn't have the entire backstory of its history behind it? That's what I don't know. But the thing is, it works somehow. And I feel like Zack Snyder might be like the king of Swamp Castle in Monty Python's Holy Grail, who says, when I told people I was going to build my castle on this swamp, they told me I was mad, but I did it anyway, and it sank. So I built another one, and that sank as well. And then I built a third one, and that burned down, blew up, and then sank. But the fourth one, that stayed up. It's the same with his DC movies. It's like, when I told people I was going to replicate the Marvel formula in half the time with a fraction of the movies, they told me I was stupid. But I did it anyway. And the first movie tanked, and the second movie tanked, and the third movie tanked. But the fourth movie, that's kind of what happened. It's almost like he's done it so many times that we're kind of got different expectations now. So we know what to expect going into a Zack Snyder movie. We know it's going to be as pretentious as all hell. We know it's going to be so long and bloated. We know there's going to be so much ridiculous slow motion every two seconds. But when you go in there expecting that and then you get it, it's like, well, this is all part of the experience. This is what I expect. And it was strangely good. So, I mean, it's so difficult to unpack. I'm not going to go on for too long because otherwise it's going to start to belabor points. But first of all, immensely better than the Joss Whedon movie. But that's not difficult. That is a very low bar to try and get over, you know. Is it essentially the same story? Yes, but oh my god. Goodness, there is so much more to it. The biggest two pieces, obviously, are, of course, Cyborg and The Flash. I'm not going to tell you all the plot details because I'm sure you've, you've seen it. If you're, if you're hardcore enough into this stuff to watch my channel, then <laughs> you probably have seen this. But Cyborg and Flash get so much more backstory, particularly Cyborg, which actually makes the whole film make so much more sense. The, the mother boxes, while still MacGuffins, actually have more relevance and understanding to them. They make so much more sense. And everything else kind of does as well. It all fits. It feels like the characters are all speaking with the same voice. And it's not two different ideas that have been schmooshed together into some Frankenstein creation, which of course is what the Whedon one was. But so many of the changes do seem to be for the better. The thing is, again, like I say, it's not a good film. Zack Snyder doesn't know how to make a good film, dare I say. He knows how to make a music video. He knows how to make things that look pretty. He knows how to make things that look cool. Does he know how to like tell an emotional story? Probably not. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not like, I could do Justice League better. No, I couldn't. I wouldn't have a clue. But I'm not a director, you know? So there's certain things that you should expect people to be able to do. I don't think Justice League is a well-told story. But again, you go in knowing this. It's like, this is the experience I'm expecting. And we got it. And it was entertaining for that. It was so stupid. It was so stupid. Like... The, the Wonder Woman intro scene in the bank with the terrorists who want to just blow themselves up because why not? That's, it's, it's the dumbest, the dumbest thing in the world. So adding all the hyper violence to that makes it hilarious. It makes it so funny. And then the little schoolgirl at the end, who the school children are not in the least bit traumatised from seeing people gunned down, massacred in front of them, and then having their skulls crushed by Wonder Woman. They're like, yay, Wonder Woman! Can I be like you? It's like, did you not see her just obliterate this guy in front of you? Nah, it's all good. It's fine. That, but I, again, I'm belaboring one tiny scene. I could go on. Also, there, there are certain things, just while I'm thinking about it, that like any editor 
would be like, Zach, you don't need that scene in there. You don't need that, that shot in there. There's a wonderful scene when they're going to rescue some of the people who have been kidnapped by the parademons and they're going into their base and it's just a scene of them walking upstairs and nothing makes superheroes look less super than watching them trudge upstairs. It's like, this is the scene that they had at the end of Ghostbusters when they're like, how many more floors? 18, you know, and it's like, that's funny because they're a bunch of working class schlubs who are not heroes. <laughs> Watching Batman be like, oh, oh, there's so many stairs. <laughs> that's just so stupid, but it's, it's funny. But again, it's things that, that any kind of competent editor would have been like, you need to take that out. But this is uncut. Zack Snyder. This is four hours. No one was taking a knife to this. This was Zack Snyder, his vision, which again, makes it fun because it's like, let me see what this crazy guy's gonna do. And he did it. And for that, I enjoyed it. That's the thing. I was never bored. Like for the first half hour, I was watching it with like a cringy smile on my face. Like, oh my God. Like they, when they were making this, they were taking it so seriously, and that's what's hilarious. But then after that, you kind of just, you just buy into it. It's like indoctrination. Like, after, after that, you, you just start to be like, okay, this is the world we live in. Have at it. Let's do it. And with that in mind, it's fun. It's just stupid fun. But that four hours flew by. So I got my money's worth. Plus I got HBO or you know, Now TV for the month. So, you know, in two weeks time, I got Godzilla versus Kong and then I got Mortal Kombat. So I got my money's worth. So yeah, this was a good time. All the dark side stuff made things so much more coherent and like full kind of plot. But again, so much stupidity there as well. I don't, I'm not a big DC person, so I don't fully understand some of the things, but like Dark Side, first of all, how, le how much less impactful would Thanos have been if in the first Avengers movie, we saw him show up and get beaten up and then dragged back. It's like, whoa, Thanos just got bitch slapped. Cause that's what we see with Dark Side. We see the flashback where he turns up tries to take over and destroy the world, gets beaten and dragged back like a bitch. And it's like, that's dark side, okay. And also while that happens, he loses the anti-life equation. I don't know exactly how that works, but it's like, it shows that he sort of like, boom, has the anti-life equation on Earth. And then they drag him off of Earth because he's, get, he's getting killed. And then he just, he loses, he, for, he forgets. He forgets where the anti-life equation is. And then halfway through, halfway through the film, Steppenwolf is, is like, I found the anti-life equation. It's here on Earth. You know, where you left it. <laughs> and Darkseid's like, don't. <laughs> you know? It's like, how do you lose the anti-life equation? It's not a set of car keys, but apparently he managed to. And that just felt like, may maybe I don't understand the DC law. Like someone explained that to me because as a layman watching it, I'm like, that's kind of dumb. All right. So hopefully someone can actually explain that to me and it's just me not understanding how that works. But still, everything else in the film, the climax of the film was so much better. Everyone had more stuff to do. There wasn't the stupid thing with saving the family while fighting the everyone in the big red ugliness. No, no, the ending was so much better. The middle and the beginning were good too. So it was fun. Stupid, but fun. Okay, it's almost 10 minutes. That's all my thoughts you need. I hope you enjoyed this. This is why this is on the supplementary channel. Guys, until next time, no, don't display model behavior because that's the other channel. I don't know. Keep watching fun movies, even if they're technically garbage. <laughs> until next time, see you guys later.